From the News Channel 8 studios, let's talk live with your hosts, Natasha Barrett and Doug McElway. Okay, if you're doing well financially, you might feel pressure to bail out those in your life who are struggling right now. That's right. The trick is knowing how to help without sacrificing your savings in the process. Well, personal finance counselor Harry and Freeman joins us today to tell us what we need to know before we cut that relative a check. You know, Harry, and this is really a huge issue, especially now with the, the re, uh, recession and everybody kind of struggling. Um, money can really be a blessing and a curse in a family, can it? Yes, it can. And you can. see those situations all the time. How do you know, you know, say you have a child, a grown child, lost their job, come to your mom, dad, I, <laughs> I need help a little... Help me out. Yeah, help me out a little bit here. Uh, where do you go from there? Do you say, sure, here you go, or what? Well, I, if, it's a, if it's a relative, you definitely want to sit down with them, look at their budget, see where their money is going. They may just be spending money frivolously, and so you don't want to lend money to someone who's spending it frivolously because you feel like it's for naught. And so you want to sit down with them, help them map out a plan, and if you still feel like you want to loan them the money, you can. But you want to make sure that you keep your head above water. You don't want to get yourself into a financial crisis by helping someone else. It's the hardest thing, family and money. It's like friends and business. You sometimes don't want to mix it. We all know what can happen if something goes wrong. Friendships can go awry and just feelings. But how do you lay down the groundwork to maybe not get in a bad situation? If, say if my sister comes to me. She's come to me before. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No. I, right I know. It's pleasant. But see, she's come to me before, and maybe she hasn't paid back or maybe she hasn't managed. How do you handle that from the get-go? of laying foundation or groundwork with the family to either pay you back or manage it well next time without, you know, alienating the relationship. Yes, well, you can talk to them. Um, you can tell them how you got out of a personal financial crisis. If they refuse to listen to your advice, what you can do is ask for the address. You can ask them. If they say the money is for a bill, you can say, well, give me the address, and I'll send the money. That way you know the money is going to an actual payment as opposed to going into their hands, and you don't know what the, where the money is going. And so that way you really are helping them, and you're maintaining the re relationship. Now, if they get upset, then you know that the money it wasn't really for a bill. It was for something forever. Well, they say, I mean, I could see someone and say, well, you don't trust me. I mean, that could happen, right? Yeah. I'm say, your well, sister. I'm your brother. Sure. You can say, well, I want to take this worry off of you. I want to take this stress off of you. Here's how I can help You're you. like, yes, I do not trust you, so <laughs> give me the address. <laughs> you know, somebody said to me one time, and I thought this made sense, is that when even with family, and it's important to maintain a business relationship when it comes to money, you should put things in writing, you should draw up a contract, you hmm. know, you don't have to go to a lawyer, but, but get it in writing, make the terms very clear, keep it all above board so that there's no confusion down the road. Is that a good advice? That is good advice, but it also depends on the relative. Some relatives may agree to that, and some relatives, they may become offended, and you may strain the relationship even more because you wanted to sign a contract. Because, as Natasha was saying, they may get offended and say, you don't trust me. So you really have to really know your relative to know how they will respond to something like that. You, what if you have a repeat offender? That sister I was talking about. No, I'm just kidding. I do have two sisters, but I'm not calling them out. I mean, what if you have a repeat offender that keeps on coming to you, and you thought the first and second time that you were really trying to help them in a hard time in their life, but it's obvious that they're just not managing things well and coming to you at the end? Well, in that case, you don't want to... Um hinder someone you really want to help them and so you need to direct them to a professional or some social service program to say this is where you can get assistance because you're still I see you're still making the same mistake and I want to help you I don't want you to continue to make the same mistakes I want you to improve your financial situation so here are some services that you can use what 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 you've been doing this for a long time and you help families and individuals with finances what are the big mistakes that people make the main mistake is people live above their means. A lot of people want the big house, the white picket fence, the fancy car, mm -hmm. but they don't think about the consequences. They don't think about what's going to happen in the future if they buy all these things. And so you really need to live be well below your means. Um, in some cases, you need to maybe live like your grandparents, um, like people who lived in the Depression. They didn't go out to eat. They cooked at home every day. They brought their lunch to work. They walked to work, or they caught the bus, or they drove their bicycle. You really need to start live a thinking simple differently. Yeah, you really need 
to change your mindset if you want to survive a financial crisis and if you want to survive this recession. Have you seen anyone um, jeopardize their financial well-being to help other people? Yes, yeah, some of my friends have done that. They have maxed out their credit cards trying to help parents. And with parents, it may be a little different. You know, your mother gave birth to you. You, you know, you really feel a different. <laughs> you have that allegiance. But you have right. an allegiance. You really feel differently about that. But you have to think about your future. If you lose your job, you're in debt. Now you can't help your parents either. And so who's going to help you? So you really have to be careful about trying to help a relative and not get yourself into a worse situation. It's just so hard to say no sometimes. It I'm is just say, Do you ever just say, I'm sorry? No, it is I hard. can't. I guess you need to lay down the law. Yes, you really do need to lay down the law. And you want to help people, but you have to have boundaries. You really have to set boundaries and let people know that you're not just a, a, a bank. You know, you're not an ATM. Mm -hmm. that you have to set boundaries, either do a contract or, you know, sit down, help them create a budget, tell them how you got out of a financial crisis. And so that way you don't feel guilty. And in the same instance, you're helping them. Can you ever charge them interest? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like a second or third cousin. <laughs> You know, on once well, removed. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, sure, you have can you charge that. Yes, I have. I'm just writing down notes here. She's like, how do I deal with this one? You can charge interest. I've heard of family members do and charge interest. And it worked. And it did work. Better than the bank. It's an incentive to pay it off. Exactly. Soon. But like I said, you really have to know the relative to know if um, you will offend the person or if they will be receptive to the plan you're laying out for them. And it can really poison a relationship. It you know, sure can. It, it really, you got to be careful you about do. that. Have you seen family? just yeah they're not talking to this yes. how do you make sure that doesn't happen well you like I said you have to know the relative and you have to present it in an in a, in a non-confrontational way you don't want to sound like someone's mother you don't want to sound like a dictator but you want to just re remain calm and just really ensure them that you really are trying to help them but you want to ensure that they don't get into a financial crisis in the future and yeah. then you also have to be careful if you help one relative other relatives oh, may come and want go. and say well you gave Mary a loan why can't why you give can't me you help a loan? me money's the root as they say yeah thanks for these tips Thank sure you so much we're writing them down mm -hmm.